Hi, my name's Jim, and welcome to another Photon Rookie video. This is an earlier image I took of M42, and as you can see, my core is completely blown out. Later on, I learned how to expose the trapezium, and some of you asked me how I did it. So this is a tutorial on how I accomplished that. I hope you find it useful. Okay, here we are in Cyril. We have our unstretched image of M42 on the screen there. The stars have already been removed. It's interesting to note that when I used StarNet to remove the stars, it left the stars in the trapezium there with the nebula. I'm not sure why. It doesn't really affect anything we're going to do, but you can still see them there in the unstretched starless image. We've also run this image through Gragspert already. We've done the background removal. Uh, we've done the denoising. So we're ready to start our stretching process. So what we're going to do is we're going to stretch this image and we're going to do our best to preserve the stars in the trapezium so you can see it. So here's a quick and dirty way to do it. We're going to open up the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation and we're going to choose generalized hyperbolic transform and we're going to use humid weighted luminance under the color stretch model. So this is the important part. Here at local stretch intensity you want to take that down to about 30 percent of what it normally is about there and then we can start stretching. We're going to do a series of stretches here. As you can see, we're starting to bring out a little bit more detail in the nebula. So we hit apply. We're going to repeat. Drop the local stretch intensity down and stretch it way out here. There's a little more detail. Hit apply. Again, drop this down and stretch. Now if you notice, our nebula is starting to show up and we've still got a good clear view of the trapezium. So we're going to continue on just keeping an eye on that. So drop the stretch intensity down and stretch. Let's do it again. Drop the intensity down and stretch. Okay, that still looks pretty good. Um, you're seeing some pretty good detail on the nebula now, but we've also got kind of a gray tint to our entire image, so we're going to go ahead and remove that now. Uh, if you remember in the previous tutorial I did, and I'll put a link down below to that tutorial if you want to take a look at it. All the data from your image is located in this spike, Everything to the left of it, or almost everything to the left of it, is a dead zone. If we get rid of that, it'll take this gray tint out of our image. You all, you want to, when you do that though, you want to make sure you don't clip your image. So down here where it says clip percentage, you want to make sure that value stays at zero or very close to zero. If you let that value climb, then you're just cutting uh, data in your nebulosity out, losing data that you worked hard to get in the first place. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose linear stretch black point shift and we're going to stretch and move that spike to the left. As I do it, you'll see that gray tint disappear. Okay, that looks pretty good. We've clipped a tiny bit. I'm not worried about that small amount. So we got rid of that gray tint. You can still see the trapezium, the four stars there pretty well. You could probably stretch it a little bit more, but as you stretch, you're going to come close to blowing that core out. Okay, one thing I failed to do, and this is a good learning experience, when you do the black point, you want to make sure you apply it. And then go back to, there you go. So um, that image looks pretty good. You can actually take this as your finished image and run it through GIMP or whatever software you use to fine-tune the image and then you can go through StarNet and recombine the stars to it and you'll be able to see your trapezium pretty clearly there. 
The advantages of doing it this way is it's quick and easy. Um, it's effective. The disadvantage is we're still leaving some of our data and our nebulosity on the table. Um, so if there's another way that we can overcome that, it's called layering in GIMP, where it will allow us to stretch the image to its full potential and still we'll be able to expose the trapezium and see that little grouping of stars there. So let's go ahead and do that next. Um, So what we're going to do is we're going to go into GIMP in just a moment and we're going to use this image that we just created as one of the layers and then we're going to finish stretching this image and use that as another layer to lay over, to lay over top of this one. And when we lay that layer over top of this one, we'll use an eraser tool to erase the blown out core and reveal the trapezium underneath it. So we'll go ahead and do that now. The first step is to save this image as a TIFF and you come down here for supported files and choose TIFF you see it changed it to a TIFF image and on my desktop I have a file called TIFF it's like a grand central station for all my TIFF files I throw them all in there and take them all out as I as I uh, process these images it's just easy for me to go there and find what I need it's all in one place so we're also going to rename this. I'm going to rename this layer 2 because this is going to be our bottom layer in GIMP. And by renaming it, it's just easy to spot. So we'll call it layer 2. All right. And then we're going to hit save. You have to hit save twice. All right. So that image is saved. Now we're going to finish stretching it to get all this detail out we want. So again, we're going to go back to generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation. Instead of since a lot of our colors come out, we're going to instead of using human weighted luminance, we're going to go to even weighted generalized hyperbolic transform. This time we're going to leave the local stretch intensity where it is. We're not going to move it. Uh, and then we're just going to stretch as normal. So you can see we're bringing quite a bit more detail out that was hidden previously, but we're also blowing the core out. So that looks pretty good about there. I'm going to go ahead and apply it. And let's go down to the black point shift and see if we can remove some of that grayness that came back. Okay, that looks better. Um, we're clipping a tiny bit, but that little small value doesn't mean anything. So we hit apply. So I think we're done stretching our image. Um, it's interesting to note you can just barely see the stars in the trapezium there, but we're going to fix that with layering and we're going to expose it. So Make sure you hit apply and close. Now we're going to save this image as a TIFF in that TIFF folder on my desktop. So come up here and hit the download and we're going to change it to a TIFF file. And I just need to find my TIFF folder on my desktop. There it is. And we're going to rename this one layer one. Layer one. There we go. And we're going to save it. And you hit the save button again. Okay, uh, you're done with Cyril for now until you come back to it to, to marry your stars back. So you just want to minimize. You don't want to close it. All right, so we're in GIMP now. GIMP is open. What we're going to do is we're going to load those two layers into GIMP that we just created. Now, it's important to note that as you load the layers in one at a time, you want to make sure you do your bottom layer first and your top layer second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take our file called layer2 out of my TIFF file and load it into GIMP first. 
So the way we do that is we come up here to File, and you want to use Open as Layers. I need to go to Desktop and find my TIFF file. All right, there it is. Open it up, and here's Layer 2 that we created. And you'll get this box asking whether you want to convert the image from a color profile. I always just keep what I have. So there it is. There's image two. You've got it in there. Um, you can see the trapezium the way we left it. So next we want to go up and we want to load image one in, layer one. So file. You want to come down to open as layers again. And you want to choose layer one. And you want to keep. And there it is. There's our second layer with um, the core all blown out. Something we might want to do at this point is to go into colors and adjust our saturation. A box will open up over here and you can bring that saturation down just a bit. In my opinion it was a little bit too intense. Hit OK. Uh, you can go back up to colors and come down to exposure. You can change your exposure around a little bit. All right, I kind of like that right there. Okay, again, go back up to colors, and you've got shadows and highlights. Uh, sometimes increasing shadows, you can bring out more detail in the background, and you can see it there, but you have to be careful with this because you also can increase your noise level. So I kind of like it right there. It brought those background clouds out nicely. The white adjustment can also help with that blown out core. You see when I reduce it, it makes it not quite as intense. Uh, you can also use the highlight slide bar to bring that down and kind of de-intensify the core a little bit. All right, so we hit OK. And then go back up to colors and the last thing we have is um, contrast. So contrast can make a, a change in that can make an image look great, but it can ruin it too. So you have to be kind of careful. So you can see what happens if you take it too far. You lose a lot. And if you take it too far the other way, it all goes gray. So let me reset it and put it back at its starting point. I would say adjusting the contrast a little bit right there helped it. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sharpen. So we're going over here to Filters, and we're going to come down to Enhance, and come down to Sharpen. So you see it automatically added a little bit of sharpness to it. We can take it up. In fact, you can take it to where you just ruin the image, or take it back down to where it's all blurry. So let me put it back in its starting point. Uh, you don't want to over sharpen it too much in GIMP or normally I don't because I use AstroSharp when I'm pretty much done with this part of it and AstroSharp will really really sharpen the image up for you so you don't have to do it too much in GIMP. So kind of like that so you can actually see the trapezium in this but we're going to make it even clearer. Um, what we have to do now if you look over here under opacity you'll see our layer one and layer two what we need to do is we need to apply a mask to layer one so we go up here to layer open that box up and we come down here and select mask and come over here and put add layer mask you want to make sure that this little circle has a is checked for black full transparency and that invert mac mask has an X by it. So what we'll do is we'll hit add and there you'll see a white frame has opened up next to layer one. That's what you want. Okay, here's where the fun begins. You want to come over here to this color box, open it. You want to make sure under current color that this box is black. If there's anything other than black in there, choose black and make it black. So you hit OK. Now we're ready to grab this eraser. And we're going to bring this eraser tool and we're going to take a real light touch with it. We'll start right over the trapezium there. 
and we'll just kind of take it around. What we're doing here is we're erasing some of that top layer and exposing the layer underneath. And you want to be as economical with this as you can uh, to kind of make it look like a natural part of the image. So I like that. There's your trapezium. It looks wonderful. So I'm not going to really do anything more to that. I think we're done with that part. So the next thing you want to do is you want to merge the bottom layer with the top layer. So you come down here to this little symbol and you click on it one time. So what you've done, you've just now merged both layers together. So from here on out, you just continue your processing. You can send this to AstroSharp. You can do some more adjustment on it here in um, GIMP. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll, I'll get the final image for you with the stars remarried to it and show it at the end of the video. Uh, again, I have a tutorial on here for the entire workflow and I'll put a link to it on the bottom and you can fit what we've done here into that workflow and it'll probably work for other objects too that may have blown out cores or areas that are too bright you can use this method to also expose them anyway i hope you found this helpful uh, if you have any suggestions for me or see anything that i could have done better please let me know also please like and subscribe we're approaching 500 subscribers now i have a bet with my wife that i'll get a thousand by christmas so please help this guy win a bet with his with his wife and like and subscribe. I appreciate all of you watching and that's it for this video. Okay, here's the final image. Stars are put back in, did a little more processing on it and it turned out pretty nice. Uh, again, I hope you found this useful and we'll see you on the next video.